first items we're gonna be assembling on our fuselage is gonna be joining the front end to the back end. But before we do so, we have to prep these areas. And this is gonna be very similar to what we did with our spars on our wing in the previous video. Let's go ahead and take our knife and prepare these two pieces. Feel free to pause the video at the end of this to make sure that your pieces look just like mine. All right, anytime we have a score cut in a channel we need to remove, we're always gonna trace it with a knife with a dulled blade on the very, very tip. Make sure you don't cut all the way through your piece but if you do by accident, you can easily repair it with a piece of tape. All right, got a little extra foam in there. I'm just gonna just carefully weed that out. If you ever notice that your foam is not coming out easily, simply just recut over the score line just a little bit deeper, closer to the facer paper, and try it again. Feel free to pause the video at this point and make sure that your pieces look just like this. You wanna see nice, clean cavities on the lower bottom surface of the fuselage, you also want to see the overlap of the front nose and the back nose to be nice and clean as well. Now that we're ready to move on to the next step, we're going to flip this over 180 degrees, and we're going to line up our doublers, and we're going to let our paper overlap and line everything up from the wing cavities to the tops of the fuselage. Once we're happy with that, we're going to seal this down with a piece of 2 inch tape. I always like to do just one half first. And from that point on, I can use even pressure. I'm just going to press these two together nice and tight. Make sure it's exactly where I want it. There we go. Now we can flip this over 180. And we're going to be very, very careful. We're going to open this up 180 degrees. And now we can focus our glue right in the crease between the facing paper and the foam. I will carefully unfold it, I set this down on the table, and then press it nice and flat. The reason we want to press this flat is we want the facing paper on the other side to not have too much glue where it's a big bulbous joint. Now at this point, if you wish, you can very carefully remove that extra tape and you have a very clean seam. Let's go ahead and flip this over 180 degrees one last time. And now we're going to do a quick test fit of our servo doublers on both sides of the fuselage. What I like to do is I like to put the glue on the doubler itself. This is a little bit easier than putting it on the fuselage sides because you won't know exactly where this overlap is going to be in the middle. And we'll just kind of wiggle this around just a little bit. And we're going to make sure it lines up perfectly around all the edge lines. And the same process on the other side. We have this all lined up. We're going to flip this over. We're going to place our glue down. And we're going to press it in place. I'm going to carefully move this fuselage to the edge of the table right here. And I'm going to bring in my two fuselage front doublers. And similar process as before, we're going to go ahead and weed this out. Let's go ahead and do that right now. We'll cut our score lines and we'll pull out the pieces that we don't need. Feel free to pause your video, make sure that both your pieces look just like this. You're going to have the center cavity cleared out and also the main area for the wing hold down and the landing gear cut out. Now for these doublers, we're going to do a C-fold. A C-fold is where both pieces go 180 degrees to meet each other. You're going to notice with the C-fold, when we bend this around, it's going to line up perfectly with the reference line for a power pod. It's really important whenever you're doing a C-fold to make sure that the bottom edge is perpendicular to the table and that all your pieces line up. Once we checked and made sure everything fits, make sure you have plenty of hot glue and we're going to focus the glue on the inner doubler that's a smaller piece. This is going to keep us from putting glue where we don't want it. I always just like to trace the perimeter, keep it inside about a quarter of an inch, a little sleep on both sides, and on the very bottom, a very, very thin ribbon of glue. We're going to fold this over 180 degrees now. We're going to do the exact same motion, make sure our edge lines line up, make sure our edges are flush. And what I like to do, just use the table as my friend and push down nice and square, and then I can go back down. That's just gonna give us a nice clean edge on the very bottom that's also really strong. The same process on the other side. 180 degree turn. We're gonna line up the area by the wing saddle, the edge line on the bottom there. Perfect. Perfect. 
108 degrees over. I'll first concentrate on where the wing saddle and the edge mark are. There we go. Press that down. Get one quick hard press against the table. And then right back, checking all the angles one last time. Feel free to pause the video, make sure that both your pieces look just like what we see here. And now we can bring back our fuselage and we can glue them in place. Now before we glue down our doublers, there's a couple of very important things we want to mention. Some parts of these doublers are not going to have glue on them because the canopy on the very top is going to be able to be removable. So it's really important that we follow these next steps very carefully or you may accidentally glue your area where your canopy is going to go on to your doubler. First thing we're going to do is just make sure that we have a good test fit and whenever we test fit this, we should be able to line this up with the outer edge marks all the way around. The back line of our doubler is going to go right where our fuselage creases and then it's going to follow the edge line all the way around the fuselage. Now you're going to notice if I remove this, the edge line and the markings on the actual fuselage themselves are actually inward from the doubler. That's because that's where the canopy is going to be able to slide down without being able to be crushed inward. So whenever we put the glue on, we're not going to be putting on the doubler and gluing it down to the fuselage. We're going to put the glue on the fuselage first. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this piece right where I need it. I'm going to do the one closest to me first. We're just going to check this out, line it up with all the etch marks. There we go. I'm just going to flip this over. And now when I put my glue, I'm going to put it on the inside of the etch mark. So here we go. I'm just going to trace this out. I like to always just kind of go around a quarter inch, leave it so it can squeeze out. I'll put a little bit more here, a little bit more. There we go. Now we're going to line this up with the etch marks one more time. There's that. And you'll notice it really doesn't take hold until I finally press down nice and firm. So our wing saddle, our etch lines, everything's lined up. Let's go ahead and hold this down for about 30 seconds. All right, one side down, one to go. Again, we're always going to make sure we do our test fit. It's nice and smooth right where our wing saddle is. Our etch lines line up all the way around. That's also a really great indicator to make sure that we know exactly where we want to glue. Plenty of glue in my hot glue gun. I'll start up here. Again, I'm keeping about a half an inch in. And we're going to drop this right in. I'm looking at the wing saddle first. Then I'm checking my edge lines, just making real subtle movements. That looks good. I'll push that down, lock it in. Now that we have both of our doublers glued down, let's put our attention towards the back of the fuselage. This back of the fuselage is going to have to taper inwards. And to make this a little bit easier, I'm just going to lift up very gently on the score cut and allow this to bend in just like you see here. You're going to notice that once I do this and I roll this up and match the angle, this is going to line up beautifully. You don't want the bend on the inside going towards your fuselage to fight against you. So make sure you bend it up enough where it naturally just goes right into place as easy as that. So it's incredibly important to make sure that whenever we're putting the fuselage together that everything is perfectly perpendicular. For that reason, we're going to be using the triangles from our crafty kit to make sure that when we bend this up that we can easily get our perpendicular measurement and that we're not one side or the other. All right, so we have this bent. We've already practiced it. That looks really good. I have just enough hot glue for this, so I'm going to focus the majority of my hot glue right on the bottom where the paper meets the bevel. We go all the way up inside the seam to that edge. And for extra strength, we're going to put it right on the bottom of the doubler. Now using the table as my friend, I'm going to bend this up 90 degrees. And then I can use my triangle to make sure it's perpendicular. Let's go ahead and do the same process now on the other side. We're going to lift up the back of the fuselage. We're going to let it crease right where the edge mark is. And once we have that angle established, we can rotate it 90 degrees and make sure everything fits down nice and snug against the table. Now this type of fold is called a B fold. And B fold is where the side plates are beside the bottom plate or the top plate. So make sure that whenever you do this, don't do this as an A fold where it goes over top of it. All right, so once again, we're making sure that as we rotate this up, we're pressing against the table. We're making sure the side plate is beside the bottom plate, and it is. That looks wonderful. Make sure we have our extra hot glue handy. And I'm gonna focus a nice healthy bead right where the foam and the paper meet. And just like the other side, we're gonna put a little bit of glue on the bottom of the doubler. 
Give that a lot of extra strength. And we're back down to the table, making sure our side plate is where it needs to be. Pressing that in. And we'll check for 90. It's always a good idea to kind of go up and down the fuselage just to make sure that none of the pieces are lifted. And just kind of keep using the table as your friend, pressing down. You can give a tremendous amount of control to the foam without denting it by having your hands not be pointy and focused in the pressure, but spread out. And on the very front, you can see the bottom of the side plates are perfectly flush with the bottom plate. Now that our fuselage has taken form, locate the piece that looks just like what you see here, and this is gonna be our rear wing hold down. To prepare our rear wing hold down, we're gonna open up our cavities just by cutting through our score cuts and weeding out the extra foam. Now this piece is gonna be two C-folds. The first C-fold is gonna be the narrower cavity, and then the final C-fold is gonna be the other side. This is gonna give us a really strong and also beautiful looking doubler. Once we've done our practice fold, same as before, we're gonna trace about a quarter of an inch inside, thin ribbon, press this over. We'll line it up with the outer perimeter. Give a little press against the table, make sure it's perpendicular, and hold that in place. Then finally, one more thin ribbon, fold it over, line it with the outer perimeter, and give it a little push right against the table to finish off that edge. Now with this piece for the wing hold downs, you're gonna see four dots here. Forgive me, this is one version older. The version you're gonna be building is only gonna have three dots. And the reason is, is this is gonna give you the ability to put the rubber bands on a little bit easier than being up against the wall. <laughs> now that we have our doubler made, our next step here is to take our barbecue skewer and you're gonna see three dots here. One in the middle, we're gonna just press through that. And I like to kind of have an angle slightly downward and you'll see why in just a second. And then we'll go through the next one. And then finally the next one. All right, using our razor blade, we're gonna cut about inch and a half long pieces of barbecue skewer, one after the other. There's one, we'll just match all these together. There's two. And then finally three. And to glue these in, we're just gonna pump a bead of hot glue right in the hole. And with a twisting motion, we're gonna press it to the other side. A little scrap piece of foam is all you need. We'll do, we'll do it two more times. These barbecue skewers are gonna be able to hold on to the rubber bands when you fasten on your wing. When you install this doubler into your fuselage, you make sure your barbecue skewers are pointing towards the tail of your airplane. And the easiest way to put this in is just simply open it up very lightly. We're gonna press it down into place. There we go. And we'll just lock this down with a little bit of glue. Now that we have our doubler in, let's put our tension next towards the rear top of the fuselage. First, we need to prep this piece by cutting through our score lines and removing the extra foam. At the very top of our fuselage top, you're gonna to notice there's a C-fold. We'll go ahead and just do a quick practice test. That looks great. And then we can lock it down. <laughs> and for our top plate of the fuselage, it's gonna mount right at the back of the canopy, and be flush with the tail of the fuselage. Let's go ahead and give it a quick test fit. And also, it's a good idea to have make sure you have your triangle handy and check that everything is perpendicular. Once we're happy with the fit, we'll make sure we have plenty of hot glue in our glue gun, and we'll put a healthy bead right down between the paper and the foam. I also like to put a little bead right on the doubler just for some extra strength. Now I can flip this over one more time, slide it down into place, and then we can carefully flip it over against the table and use the table as our friend. 
And while we're holding this down, once again, we can check and make sure everything is perpendicular. Our next piece is gonna be the top of the front of the fuselage. For this, we're gonna prep it by scoring and removing the extra foam that we don't need. For the front edge for reinforcement, this is gonna be a fold over. To do a fold over, we're just gonna simply put a nice healthy bead of glue, starting and stopping about a quarter inch from the edge. We're gonna fold it up to 90 degrees. I like to count to five or six. And then we fold it down and then put gentle pressure, lat in the paper, pull tight against the piece that it's glued against. For our air scoop, we're gonna take a simple shim and shim it up like you see here. But before we do so, put a bead of glue right where the hinge line is. We'll pop it up and we'll stick that piece of foam in. With the air scoop pointing towards the front of the nose, we're gonna line up the top piece of our fuselage, making sure that the area right by the canopy is flush with where it makes the bend. You should also notice that the little cut references line up perfectly. Now that we're happy with the fit, we're gonna place a bead of glue and I'm gonna hop over the area where the cut reference is, leaving a half inch on both sides. I can slide this down into place. And we're gonna line up the little cut marks, press it in. And then we can use the table as our friend to press it down and press it in. Now that we have our top front of our fuselage done, let's go ahead and put our attention towards the bottom of the front of the fuselage. For that step, we're gonna need the piece that you see right here. Just as we have done in other pieces, let's go ahead and do our score cuts and weed out the foam that we don't need. Once we've weeded our foam, we're also gonna go along and we're gonna remove the facing paper from the inside of our piece. You're gonna notice when we remove the facing paper from the inside, it's much easier now to be able to curl. To give this a little bit more curl, we're gonna take it to the edge of the table and we're slightly gonna just press down with our hands as we pull the piece downward. Take your time and just do a little bit at a time. We're gonna focus most of our curve right at the very top here, where it's gonna curl around the front of the fuselage. You're gonna notice it's very easy to work with this on the bench, so once you get it curled to where you want it, it's easily gonna be able to mold around the front of the fuselage. Next, I'm gonna use a piece of tape, mainly as acting as a hinge so I can easily line this up. Lifting up ever so gently, I'm gonna press the front nose piece right into the fuselage and press the tape downward. This is gonna give us the ability to easily mold this front piece around without it moving. And the first thing I'm gonna do is a practice roll. To do this, we're gonna use the table as our friend and we're gonna roll this piece around all the way to the very edge. Once we've done that, you're gonna notice that there's a little bit of an overlap, roughly about the width of the piece of foam. That's exactly what we wanna see. I'm gonna go ahead and just press this down, and when I do so, it's gonna make two little indents right in the foam where I need to cut my score cut, and that's gonna be how we're gonna get a precision cut on our piece of foam. One last little test here, and that meets perfectly. Now that we're happy with the way everything fits, I'm gonna make sure I have plenty of hot glue in my glue gun. I'm gonna apply a bead of glue on both sides of the bottom cover of our fuselage. Also, I'm gonna quickly apply a bead of glue on the bottom of the doublers, and this is gonna give us an immense amount of extra strength. First, we'll go right along the edges. It's a lot easier to do this without trying to hold it for the camera. Right on the top edge. And a nice healthy bead of glue on the doublers. Same process as before now. We're gonna use the table as our friend. And I'm slowly just gonna roll this right over. All the way around. I'm gonna be checking on both sides as I take this around. And finally we'll let it rest on the bottom. By doing this step in this order, what we're doing is we're keeping this piece as tight to the fuselage as possible and giving it a really good finish. Once we've waited about a minute, we can carefully remove our tape and we'll have a nice finished edge. Our last step on the bottom of the fuselage is to connect the dots and to remove the excess foam from where we need to allow the power pod to slide through. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut between each dot and once I've gotten up to where there's no more dots, I'm gonna use my razor blade to cut against the side cheek of the doubler and then finish that cut all the way up to the very top. Let's do a slight little cut here. 
Our last step on the fuselage before we move on to the tail is gonna be our top canopy. Let's go ahead and install that right now. You're gonna need the piece that looks just like this. Let's go ahead and weed our foam just like we've done on many other parts here. Make sure that you don't remove this piece of foam right here. This is gonna be our support for our main canopy area. Because this piece of foam is gonna be bent, we're gonna remove the facing paper. This back piece of paper right here is gonna be our reinforcement piece. So all we need to do is apply a bead of glue and do a fold over. Count to 10. A little bit of pressure. And just like we did on our bottom piece, we're gonna apply a gentle curve mimicking the shape of the canopy. Now that we've applied a test fit, we're gonna go ahead and apply a bead of glue on the curved section. Don't worry about this piece just quite yet. We're gonna glue this in when we cut this canopy out later. It's really important that whenever we put this glue down that we make sure that we don't accidentally get glue inside these two flaps here. If you get any kind of glue inside these flaps here, your canopy is not gonna cut out very easily. And for that reason, I'm gonna apply two beads of glue right on this very top section. And then I can actually skip over this area that's gonna to touch it. All right, and just like before, I'm gonna start right at the very back. Nice gentle hands. For our next step, we're either gonna to wanna to use our triangle square or we're gonna to wanna to use our metal ruler from our crafty kit. Now, if we've glued everything correctly, this canopy is easily gonna come out. One important thing to note is that you don't wanna cut through all the layers of foam. You only wanna cut through the outermost layer of foam. So to do this, we're gonna take multiple cuts, but we're only gonna go down very, very little. So you'll notice along all these pieces that we have little tiny reference cuts. We're gonna line up our straight edge right with those reference cuts. And once again, making sure that we only cut in through one layer of foam. We're gonna go up. There we go. And if we did everything right, this should be our last cut. Now using just gentle pressure, we should be able to just easily pop up all the areas of our foam. Looks like we have just a little bit more to cut right here. There it is. And now that we have our canopy removed, we can come back with our glue one last time to lock in the very front piece of our canopy. To add durability and make our canopy go on and off even easier, we're gonna go ahead and put a piece of folded over tape on all these edges here. This is gonna make it so when we slide our canopy down, it's not gonna catch or give us any issues. To make the canopy easy to install and remove, we're gonna first install a little tiny tongue on the very front of the canopy. This is gonna be able to give it the ability to catch in and latch on. To make the front of the canopy lock down, locate the piece that looks just like this. We're simply gonna apply a bead of glue right on the front half and on the very front nose of the canopy, little wiggle and line it up. On the rear of the canopy, you're gonna notice that we have this little tiny indent that you see right here. We're gonna take our razor blade and just with a couple crosshatch patterns, we're gonna knock this out and we want the paper to kind of be able to crush down in. Kind of make it look like a McDonald's straw. And with our little T fitting, we're gonna press this down very carefully and give it a gentle twist. Now that we've opened up the foam hole, we can install our little top stopper plate. Make sure that you mount your stopper plate so that when this, go, when this gets pressed through, it can go either forward or 90 degrees. Once we're happy with the way it looks, we'll just glue, glue it down. Now 
After the glue is fully dried, we're gonna pop this through one last time, make sure that we don't have any glue keeping us from our motion. For added reinforcement of our canopy hatch, you're gonna see a rectangled piece with a circle in the middle. Do a quick test fit, and once you're happy with the test fit, carefully remove it and apply glue. And right down over again. And our last step is to install the latch that's gonna be able to turn. To install our latch, all we simply need to do is press this firmly up against the plywood and then place a bead of glue all the way around the wood on the other side. You can choose to use instant CA, but the only downside of that is if it seeps into the other pieces of wood, it could possibly cause everything to glue together. Give your hot glue plenty of time to fully dry. This is one of the most rewarding parts of this whole entire build. Let's go ahead and give this a quick test fit to make sure everything is proper. First, we're gonna go ahead and seat this down here. This will press on both sides. And once we press this in, simple turn, and it's locked in place. Huge shout out to my youngest son, Michael. He's the one that designed this canopy latch so we don't lose any more canopies when we're flying. Friends, at this point, our main section of the fuselage is now done. Let's go ahead and pop out both our elevator and our rudder, and we'll get those prepared and installed. In your kit, you're gonna to wanna to locate your main elevator and also your rudder. Along with that, go into your hardware kit and locate your last two control horns and also your elevator reinforcement plate. Let's go ahead and prepare both the elevator and the rudder by cutting our score lines and also opening up the foam channels that we need for our folder for the front of our rudder and our elevator. Now that we removed our foam, let's go ahead and fold over the edge of our tail here, and that's gonna give us a nice durable finish. We're gonna do one side at a time. Again, starting and stopping, I'm just gonna hop right over where the cut is, and this one, just gonna go 90 degrees, and press in. 90 degrees, and press in. All right, there's one side. Let's do the same process on the other side. For our leading edge fold over, we're gonna start and stop about a quarter inch from the edge. So we take it down to the table and go up 90 degrees. I like to kind of let the piece creep away from me here and that keeps the paper nice and tight and also keeps it from gluing to the table. Now that we are done with our leading edges, let's go ahead and put our attention towards the hinge line. You're gonna notice that our pieces are glued together because our leading edge fold over. All we simply need to do is take a razor blade and cut those free. Once we've done that, we should be able to very gently open this up to 180 degrees. Making sure we have a sharp razor blade, we're gonna cut a 45 degree bevel right along our hinge line. And just like we did with our ailerons, we wanna make sure we have plenty of deflection both ways based on our style of flying. Let's go ahead and make that just a little bit deeper. And just like we did with our ailerons, we're gonna come back and do a hot glue reinforcement hinge. Light bead of glue right down, right over the paper and the foam. We can take a scrap piece of foam and wipe off the excess. Make sure your glue fully dries before moving it back and forth. In your kit, you're gonna have an elevator reinforcement piece. Line this up with the back edges being flush and make sure that the hole is lined up right over top of where your control horn's gonna be. Once you're happy with the fit, apply a bead of glue and glue it down. Let's go ahead and put the elevator aside and we'll do the same process now on the rudder. Just give a gentle score cut, make sure everything pops free. And we'll also cut the elevator fin free. And same process as before. That looks great. We'll just lock this in with the scrap piece. And just the hot glue reinforcement, we'll finish it off. To install our rudder onto our elevator, we're gonna make sure that the hinge line of our elevator is facing downwards. Next, we're gonna place the fin of our rudder through the slot of the elevator, and we're just gonna move this until everything lines up and inserts. For a dry fit, we're gonna bring out our FT3D, and we're gonna carefully guide this through the back side here. We're not gonna glue this down the first time, we're only gonna just do a quick test fit. 
Once we're happy with the way everything looks and make sure everything's perpendicular, we're gonna lock it down on all the corners with a bead of glue. Now that we're done gluing in our tail, let's go ahead and install our servos, control horns, and push rods. Before we do this, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that our servos and control horns are all centered. We're gonna use the largest control horn that we have. Now that we have our rudder and our elevator installed, let's go ahead and prep our servos, control horns, and push rods. Before we install our servos, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have our extensions both installed and also taped together. Also, make sure that whenever you install your extensions that you're matching up the grounds with the grounds and the signals with the signals. You'll know your grounds by either a brown or a black colored wire, and your signal will either be an orangish colored wire or a white. The reason that we always tape our servo connections together is to make sure that they don't accidentally come unplugged when we're flying or when we're working on the airplane. Now that we have our extensions installed and our servo centered, let's go ahead and first work on our rudder. For the rudder, we're gonna have our servo arm pointing downwards, and we're just gonna snake this through the fuselage all the way towards the front. And just like the wings, we're only gonna gently place these in place and we're gonna glue them down when we're done. Next, we're gonna install our control horn for our rudder. And just like before, we're gonna do a Z-bend using our pliers. We're gonna bend about a centimeter in, 90 degrees. Grip the push rod about three millimeters down, 90 degrees one more time. And then finally take it from a modified Z-bend to a standard Z-bend with a 90 degree bend. And because we're gonna be flying pretty aggressive aerobatics, I'm gonna install this in the middle hole of the control horn. Very gentle twist is all you need, and there's zero slop. Making sure that both the servo and my fin are centered, I'm just gonna mark with my thumbnail the outermost servo hole, making sure that my nail lines up with the outer side closest to the hinge line. This is gonna give us enough radius for it to bend perfectly. Bend 90 degrees down. Now once again, I can remove my control horn and I can finish off my modified Z-Bend. And everything lays nice and perfect now. Once we're happy and we confirmed everything is centered, we can lock in the servo first and then our control horn. Great. So now that the glue is dried on our rudder servo, we're gonna move on and do the exact same process now on the elevator. And just like before, we're gonna do our Z-Bend. If you don't like doing Z-Bends with pliers, we do sell Z-Bend pliers that work fantastic. And for this one, we're gonna insert this so the push rod favors the inside of the fuselage. This is just gonna give us a more direct link to the servo. And because we're gonna be flying a little bit crazy, I'm gonna to go to the middle hole. I'm gonna put my thumb right on the edge of the hole closest to the hinge line. And again, as we bend our servo line, and again, as we bend our push rod, this gives us room for the radius to get the perfect bend. 90 degrees in towards the fuselage. And 90 degrees up. I can finish off my Z-Band by rotating it 90 degrees. In all of our speedboat kits, we make sure that you have plenty of push rod wire, so don't worry if you don't get it right the first time. The better you can get this and the more perfect you can get this with a perpendicular servo arm, the better it's gonna fly and the better deflection you're gonna have. Also, a really cool quick tip here is if you have an extra piece of push rod wire and you wanna make sure that you don't have any rubbing on your control surfaces, especially those counterbalances, all you simply need to do is run your push rod wire right between those areas and it'll put a perfect gap for you. All right, now that we're happy with that, let's go ahead and lock that down with some hot glue. Now that we have our servos and linkages installed, our next step is to give the bracing to the tail. Now this is incredibly important because as you fly and throw those controls around, you're not gonna want your rudder or your elevator to move at all. To do this, we're gonna use our barbecue skewers and you're gonna notice four holes on the elevator and also on the rudder. Our first step is we're gonna pass our skewer through the elevator and we're gonna just with a twisting motion, turn it and engage the top of the rudder. Now, cool little tip here is if by any chance anything's not perpendicular, you can actually use these brace wires to help true up your elevator and your rudder. Once we got everything where we like it, simply take a little pen and mark the very bottom. Now we're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of room on the very bottom of the elevator, so when we cut this, cut just above that line. and reinstall it one last time here. Just going through the half of the foam on both the elevator and the rudder. We'll check for perpendicular. That looks pretty good. Once we're happy with that, a little bit of glue right on that edge and let it flow in. One, let the glue dry and do the exact same process now on the other side. The 
easiest way to measure for the bottom hole is simply to push in your barbecue skewer and then with your nail, you can just take it right to where the foam angle meets. Because these two pieces don't need to meet in the middle, you have a little bit of extra slop. And once you're done with the brace wires, you're going to notice that you have a couple extra little pieces here. This is going to be perfect for the little skid on your tail. A little bit of glue on the very bottom here. And they sell lots of aftermarket steerable tail wheels. If you ever decide to use one, these get in the air so quickly. I usually just use barbecue skewers. <laughs> All right, so our tails installed, our servos are installed. I know everyone wants to do the same thing I want to do. Let's go ahead and test fit our wings. Now the, the wings are not going to hold down until we put our landing gear in and that's going to be in a separate video. But right now we can set this on here and we're just going to check the alignment on the very bottom. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and grab our canopy. And with our canopy, oftentimes what you may have to do is just take an extra barbecue skewer and kind of roll these up and crush these in just a little bit. But before we do so, let's go ahead and just do a quick dry fit. Now with our top, if it's a little bit too tight, all we simply need to do is crush in the area around that to make a perfect fit. Although that looks really close, you can see we have a slight gap right here and a slight pinch right here. We're just going to simply remove our canopy and right where the area that we need to crush down in, I'm just going to slightly crush that in just like you see here. Once you get this to fit good, you can seal these edges with a small bead of hot glue and it'll last a lifetime. I'll give you a... Friends, at this point, we are done building the fuselage. Our servos are installed. We are ready for the next video in our video series, and that's going to be the landing gear. Now, important thing to note about the landing gear, all of our XLs are standardized around common landing gears and common techniques. So in this landing gear video, you're going to see it's actually going to be for the Scout XL. Don't let that bother you. All the bends and everything is the exact same. We'll see you in the next video.